Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta. And we are talking about focus is on drinking. Drink that many Indians wake up to and that's tea. India currently produces 30% of the world's supply and nearly 80% of this is being consumed within the country itself. Demand for tea was high domestically last year with a total of 1.1 billion kgs of tea consumed within India. The hot beverage also got a healthy tag following the pandemic, which has only spurred demand further. This demand trend only promises to get stronger with the upcoming winter months. However, in the face of growing demand, smaller players have continued their domination that began nearly two decades ago, held by government support. This has left larger producers asking for a level playing field. With the global tea market estimated to grow to $229.3 billion in 2022 and exports at a high, the opportunity is only growing for both all tea producers. So what's the outlook for the sector and what more can be done to support the sector that employs almost 10 million people? To discuss that and much more, I am now joined by Bala Sarda. He's founder and CEO at Vadam Teas. Bala, hi, good to have you. And, you know, as winter demand comes in or winter season kicks in, that is, there are a few things that the markets look out for. One is the wedding season and another is the tea and coffee demand that is expected to surge up. While, of course, we have seen the tea demand continuing up from urban and rural India as well. It is all about the made in India tea that also seems to be doing quite well. Among all of this, what is the pattern that you're looking at when you look back at 2022? Thanks, Manisha, for having me on the show once again. Uh, absolutely, I think like you said, the winter season is, is a great time uh, for a business like ours. We definitely see a lot of growth, uh, you know, given the winter months, the onset of uh, you know, colder days across across the nation, primarily North India, and of course things like you know air pollution, uh, which 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 increases the need for immunity-based drinks. So there is a definite uh, demand jump uh, we we are seeing as we speak, and of course we uh, you know hope to see that uh, growing over the next few months as as the peak of the winters hits us. Uh, that said, I think on a global level, of course uh, you know uh, India, as you know, grows most of the teas exported out in the world, almost 25 to 30 percent of the world's production is made in India. Uh, and a lot of the quality stuff from India, the 20 percent you just said, which is not consumed in India, is all exported to global markets. There, of course, um, you know, uh, due to multiple reasons, you know, um, while I think the, the midterm demand looks extremely positive, things are growing, people are moving towards wellness beverages, including tea. I think in the short term, after the peak of the COVID season, uh, secondly, uh, other factors like the war in Ukraine, um, you know, the inflationary pressures we are seeing, right? U.S., of course, as you know, the Nasdaq is is at, at its all-time low. I says basis that I think the overall spend, um, you know, on, on products like these, we are seeing some pressure in demand relative to last year. But I think, like I said, that's only a short-term short uh, uh, phenomena. And I think in the midterm and the long term, I think, you know, we continue to see a large movement of consumers towards you know, wellness teas. And of course, um, you know, I think it's India's decade. So, you know, a lot of made in <laughs> India brands are poised uh, to take opportunity of that. And of course, we, we are obviously working hard very every day uh, to sort of, you know, move forward. Fair point. I will come to, uh, you know, segments and categories there as well. But I do want to know, I mean, as you said that there is a bit of a pressure when you look at demand uh, on an year on year basis. How are these numbers looking like overall tea market and then specialty teas, premium teas? How have you seen the growth and price movement for these? I think Manisha, overall, given there was a disproportionate spike, uh, you know, we saw in wellness teas. I'm talking about the specialty in wellness teas, which people mm -hmm. were consuming at home mm -hmm. um, due to the pandemic. Uh, in 22, from an overall category perspective, we are seeing a decline year on year. Uh, but that said, like I said, you know, it's just averaging out the disproportionate growth which happened uh, for a year or two. Uh, but like I said, right, I think uh, starting January, February, we see, you know, the growth to get back on track and, and, you know, we plan to obviously take advantage of that. Mm. And is this trend only Indian or is it, is it a global trend as well? And how would you look at both of the, uh, you know, globally and India buying trends now? Is it still about the normal basic tea or do you think people are spending more on premium teas right now? Is it more about the wellness teas? Uh, uh, how are people buying? What are the trends? I think, uh, Manisha, the one thing you can't reverse is the consumer's understanding of how some of these teas help you live a much better lifestyle and i think that's what the pandemic has done for ourselves so like i said i think there is a 
there is a massive shift while of course macro numbers uh, you know can can sort of fluctuate given the disproportionate spike two years back uh, but i think uh, if you look at from a category specific perspective i think there is mm. phenomenal improvement uh, and and growth in categories and we see that happening uh, you know year on year because what we are fundamentally seeing is that you know the consumers who were consuming tea for leisure versus the consumers you know who are now you know consuming teas for wellness benefits i think the the the, the latter has of course gone up significantly mm. and that's really the audience you know the millennials who are more concerned about their health that's exactly what we are trying to cater to as a brand be it in india be it in global markets like the us and there of course i think we see a lot of uh, positive movements and i think brands and companies which will continue to innovate and make products for these consumers um, uh, and, and and stay true to their vision i think you know they will continue to grow uh, even in the mid term while i was reading as a certain reports and they suggest that the indian premium tea is expected to grow grow at a cagr of 4.2% until 2027 i mean that's a very strong number really and the market clearly seems to be talking in billions of dollars when you look at the global market here so what are we looking at more innovation uh more adoption of tea i mean i i winter is just a uh, you know an example because there are iced teas and there are dessert teas now and there is various innovations that we've seen come into this market so when you look at an year on year overall growth in overall categories how does that look like to you no i think manisha looks extremely positive okay uh you know i think there are two things which are driving this and i think companies who need to uh sort of continue to capture market share i think will have to continue to execute on that one of course is innovation hmm. um like i said uh you know the tea category is is not what it was say 10 years back okay. you know consumers of tomorrow the millennial consumers are open to experimentations they new they want new flavors they want new uh, new ingredients they want uh, you know the the products which which help them live a better lifestyle so i think innovating around that space continues to be an extremely extremely critical part of our journey as well and we continue to have a strong pipeline hmm. of products we are launching over the next few months to continue to sort of be that brand who caters to the millennial consumer uh, i think the second would be experience i think with the pandemic um, uh, setting up uh, you know the onset of the pandemic two years back i think of course you know for a brand like ours and several brands i think you know experience obviously took a hit horeca having your own stores uh, you know a lot of those things you could not do the way you can now do it again hmm. so i think how do you bring experience to tea you know uh, be it in your home be it in the hotel be it in a restaurant you go to mm. i think that's of course is going to be very very critical and we of course plan to focus on that you know probably have our own experience stores coming up very soon which is in 2023 okay. Okay. our first experience store we plan to open that in 23 which will again help us you know gain hopefully a larger share of this growing specialty tea market Bala, you were also part of the Oscar goodie bag. You've expanded in US and Canada as well. How has that experience been? No, Manisha, I think that was, I think, phenomenal. I think more than we being in the Oscar goodie bag, I, I think I was very proud of the fact that an Indian brand was in the Oscars goodie bag. In fact, we were also in the Emmys uh, goodies bag after the Oscars. So I think absolutely proud moment, not only for me as 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 somebody leading this brand, but also as an Indian. And I think, like I keep saying. I think it's India's decade. You will see many more brands in this category and several other categories come out from India. Um, you know, over the next few years. And there's a tea-based beer coming in, Bala. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Bala. I was saying that there's a tea-based beer as well coming in. I mean, is there any category, any segment that you're looking uh, which can be left oh, alone? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't hear that, Manisha. So, no, of course we did. We we did a, you know, we did a very interesting. a uh, partnership with beera recently you know we had teas you, we had beverages you can consume till evening uh, probably night as well now you know with the beer we had something we can consume after 8 pm as well but uh, but i think on a serious note like i said um, you know how do you target the millennial consumer who has a very very balanced approach to everything they do which means they do have some other beverages as well uh, and and you know how do you bring and and you know bring an experience new flavors in their lives right and that's that's why we said let's let's partner with beera and do something very interesting in this space uh, and and we will continue to do such collaborations and partnerships to expand um, this top funnel of consumers who are looking to consume 
you know specialty teas from a brand like ours mm. so wala what is the specialty tea market share as of now that you see in india and outside as well and the po point two is uh, is there price sensitivity into the market yet uh, manisha i think uh, i i may not have the exact numbers but i think we continue to of course uh, grow well as a business and you know continue to capture uh, a relatively larger share of the specialty tea business in whichever market we are in as a brand mm. um, and 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 i think uh, and i think uh, you know with with some focused initiatives uh, around the wellness space you know taking superfood ingredients like turmeric ashwagandha moringa i think you know uh, that will that will further help us uh, you know grow grow in in this space uh, over the next 3 to 5 years all right any number that you want to throw us us at what what kind of a growth are you anticipating next 3 to 5 years I think we we are targeting a double digit of course a high double digit growth percentage as a business I think like I said this was uh, uh, this year was an anomaly given you know, and and you know and and the kind of recession and inflationary pressures we are seeing as a business in the US and Europe but but like I said you know we are building a brand for the long term and I think over the next 3 4 years 5 years rather I think we see strong double digit growth coming uh, just bases you know the kind of growth we are seeing in the market as well so I want to squeeze in one last question. Do you see a lot of price sensitivity into the market right now, given the uh, given the fact that there are concerns with recession in? Uh, there is. There is. Okay. There is. There is, Manisha. So I think uh, you know, and, and I'll talk to you about a market like America, and I think that's very fair as well, right? You know, it's really when uh, you know times like these hit, and I think we have seen it historically, the 2008 financial housing crisis. Uh, I think it happened then. Then, of course, we saw it in the first couple of months of COVID. Of course, we were uh, in the wellness category, so that recovered fairly quickly. and i think the similar trend we are seeing uh, you know right now given there is an uh, you know uh, uh, there is there is definite recession which is which is coming up in some of these markets okay. but uh, but like i said i think you know the consumer is being slightly cautious about their spend mm. but that said i think a large percentage of our consumers continue to sort of you know buy from us buy larger amounts given you know Uh, wellness and the theme of wellness mm. you know that's one category you don't sort of really pull back your spend from in fact your spends tend to go up Increase. you know mm. in in times like these right so when you're more stressed uh, you know so like i said in our in our business also if you see the break up you know the more traditional categories like black teas uh, you know you we would see a, a demand pressure there but when you look at categories like herbal teas green teas a uh, wellness teas you know we we continue to see mm. strong growth despite despite the recession in these markets oh well that point is well taken piping hot onto that one so while a uh, bit of a dent when it comes to uh, global markets because of price sensitivity there but clearly innovations and wellness lifestyle benefits is something that will keep the tea market on the higher side bala thank you so much for joining us with that it's with that it's time for a short break but coming up we turn our focus to gourmet and luxury teas in a chat with isha mehta founder of satori tea don't go anywhere Welcome back you're watching Commodity Champions we now shift our focus to gourmet and luxury teas the segment that currently makes up for nearly 5% of the total tea market is witnessing a rise in popularity so how are the players capitalizing on this trend joining me now to discuss that and more is Isha Mehta she's founder at Satori Tea Isha hi good to have you you know from a everyday beverage to the cutting chai on the street side to occasions and corporate gifting to luxury to desserts to cocktails to blends there's so much that tea has really done in last few years what is uh, how do you look at the market one how has the growth been and adoption as well hi manisha thank you for having me um so with luxury tea there's definitely a sense of um, curiosity and willingness and openness from customers today um they want to try new things they want to have different experiences india produces some of the finest um loose leaf teas most of which have always been exported but now you're seeing a slight um, change where consumers are seeking to have these experiences for jicha for instance um one of our um, green teas we was we thought it would be difficult to push this particular tea in the indian market but surprisingly it's doing really well and uh, it's a fitting example to see how um the consumers evolving and is looking to try um 
new experiences and different flavor profiles. Absolutely. You know, Isha, as Bala was also suggesting that make in India tea really seems to be doing well. I mean, for the longest time, we've been exporting good quality teas. But uh, uh, how strong uh, is, uh, you know, procuring sustainability, those aspects coming within the tea market too? Um, so the orthodox tea industry in India, where I refer to the loose leaf teas and not CTC teas, is a relatively um, small scale market industry. And um, it is struggling, but there is definitely a demand for it. And um, brands such as ours, uh, niche brands, are trying to bring these about to Indian consumers themselves and create awareness that we do make good quality teas. Um, but with Indians, it's a struggle where uh, there's relatively lack of awareness within the orthodox tea market. And if the same teas were to be packaged by an international tea brand and then come uh, people would be interested and pick that up hmm. but this used to be five years ago now there's a big change in this absolutely also uh you know while of course tea is an everyday thing but tea really seems to have got it into the gifting part of it as well so whether it's about corporate gifting you talk about uh, the wellness uh, aspect of it the, the the various blends that tea has seen come into the foray as well how do you see that market market doing going forward so uh gifting is where majority of the sales happen when it comes to tea um consumers today are more mindful and conscious when they do give a gift or receive a gift um wedding favors are a big one where uh, bride and grooms today even take that extra step where they'd like to create a unique uh, blend just for the specific occasion so gifting hands down tea is like the first thing people want to go to. All right. So, uh, you know, when you look at millennials, or as you said, it, it's about weddings, it, it's about corporate gifting, where tea, tea really seems to be inching up on the ranks there. So what are the major buyers here? And also what geographies for you within India seem to be, do, seem to be doing better? Um, so with regards to gifting, uh, it's uh, festivals, occasions, um, they come from, usually they come from metros, but uh, we are seeing a slight change from uh, tier two cities as well with repeat purchases and uh, inquiries for bulk orders and gifting. So like I mentioned earlier, that, that awareness is growing, curiosity is growing, and that um, need to want to experiment new flavors is definitely there within the Indian market. Mm. You know, uh, there is there is a thing about procurement and traceability uh, as something that the millennials really seem to be following up on. So when it comes to tea, where are we within that? Um, so I'd speak for a brand such as mine. Um, Satori focuses on promoting specifically Indian origin teas. We source them directly from the states themselves. And we also promote local produce, local ingredients where um, we use these local ingredients to blend the teas without using any artificial flavoring, um, which sort of is transparent in itself. It's sustainable. We are in touch with the farmers or we work with farmer cooperatives who guide the entire process to ensure that there's transparency. Isha, also, uh, what blend, blends do you work with? What is the market looking at? What is the kind of feedback when it comes to tea as an industry on what is the, uh, what is the you know, consumer looking for? So um, the Indian consumer definitely uh, seems to love uh, blends. It's always a go-to uh, compared to just the tea in itself because it seems more enticing and exciting to try a combination of things. Um, but there is also the consumer who is um, uh, known to tea, like who understands tea in the deeper sense, how coffee is already very known and understood. So it, there is a balance between the two, but definitely blends would always uh, win. Mm. You know, there have been various reports suggesting that uh, when it comes to tea growers, 51% uh, of the market really belongs to small tea uh, uh, collaborators and small tea growers instead of the brands. That brand number seems to be going down now. With so many more people now coming within the tea business, is it increasing competition for you as well? Or do you think there's enough space for everybody? Definitely. So when we started off, um, there were very few brands within the space. It's been about five years now, and there's been an influx of 
I, I can't even name the number. Before mm-hmm. I could have them on my fingertips. Now there's been an influx of so many, so many brands that have come together. Some that specifically only focus on gifting itself. So um, yeah, the competition is increasing. <laughs> okay. Also, Isha, you know, the whole trend seems to be changing. There are, there are tea coffees, uh, cafes, tea lounges, and then uh, there, there is uh, online sales. And as you said, there are some startups who only want to do uh, tea gifting, only want to be in that category. What do you think uh, on how the market is evolving and where are we headed? I feel that there is a um, demand for having experiences, like Bala also spoke about earlier, um, to create tea experience zones or tea experience spaces, um, which sort which help people to connect with themselves in the larger sense. And um, sorry, could you repeat your question? I just forgot the latter. <laughs> I was I was asking on how do you look at the market going forward from here? On what do you uh, think will sustain? Will stay on? Definitely experiences to create these experiences to help people understand better. Coffee has already dominated it. Coffee mm-hmm. culture is no, well known and well understood, but tea in itself is unexplored. And there's so much more that tea has to offer in itself. Um, be it tea tasting sessions, tea meditations, just understanding the product in its authentic self itself. So yes. All right. Tea tasting sessions I had heard of, tea meditation I had. And so uh, clearly a lot more happening when it happens on tea. Thank you so much, Isha, for joining us. And that's all about the tea piping hot clearly, as our experts tell us. But with that, that's all that we have on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you for watching.